It's amusing to note that the silent assassin in this film was played by Orson Welles' personal manager, Jack Moss. He agreed to it only if Welles promised he wouldn't have to deliver any lines. And of course, that only makes the character even more creepy. Moss had a stunt double for the long shots at the climax of the picture, and that poor guy slipped off the ledge and ended up breaking both legs. Although Wells, as he often did, later exaggerated the tale, claiming that the guy had actually fallen to his death. For many years, it looked like Journey into Fear was going to be Norman Foster's footnote in film history. But I'm happy to report that he's being reevaluated now, largely due to the Film Noir Foundation's restoration of his 1950 film, Woman on the Run, a crafty vehicle for Anne Sheridan that clearly showed Wells' influence on Foster's direction. And Norman Foster had started as a stage actor, and for seven strange years, from 1928 to 35, he toiled in the shadow of his more famous wife, Claudette Colbert. Yet they never lived together, keeping separate residences, first in New York and later in Hollywood, the ostensible reason being that Colbert's mother despised her son-in-law. According to some sources, she even forced her daughter to abort Foster's child. Now, plenty of rumors circulated about their odd union, but Colbert only laughed and said, the most important requirements for a successful marriage are living apart and lack of jealousy. Well, they eventually divorced, with Foster marrying Loretta Young's older sister, Sally Blaine. After that, Foster turned from acting to directing, starting with a half dozen Mr. Moto movies at Fox in the late 30s. And he showed a flair with these B pictures that caught the eye of Orson Welles, who quickly brought Foster into his trusted inner circle. In 1941, Welles chose Foster to work with novelist John Fonte on a segment of It's All True, an anthology of stories set in Latin America. Foster had begun shooting My Friend Benito about a young boy's bond with a bull bred for fighting when Welles called him back to Hollywood to serve essentially as his surrogate behind the camera on Journey into Fear. Now, in later years, Wells's acolytes claimed that he'd directed all the good parts of this film, but Wells always maintained that it was his trusted and talented friend, Norman Foster, at the helm throughout. After the messy finish of this production, however, Foster returned to Mexico, and that's where he resumed his directing career. He's credited with discovering actor Ricardo Montalban, casting him in the sensational picture Santa, opposite popular star Esther Fernandez. It was such a big hit, they reteamed the following year for Foster's La Fuga, photographed by the legendary Gabriel Figueroa. Foster made several more excellent pictures in Mexico, and if these movies were better known, there's no doubt he'd be remembered as more than just a footnote to Orson Welles' career. Now, since today's film was so short, it gives us a little more time to dip into the mailbag. And remember to follow at Noir Alley on Facebook and Twitter for your Noir fix and to submit your questions. Now, I was bemused from a note by regular TCM viewer Ramona Hensrud, who writes, I've never been interested in film noir after seeing a few. What am I missing? <laughs> well, Ramona, if you're tuned in right now, and in all likelihood that seems like a long shot, here's something that folks who don't get film noir need to realize. Just because we have a special name for these films, that doesn't automatically mean that they're somehow more special than other movies or any better. But they are distinctive for being examples of one of the few organic artistic movements in Hollywood. I always tell people that noir is very much like jazz. A lot of its appeal comes from the way certain basic themes are creatively interpreted by different artists. Now, these are all crime stories, essentially. Sometimes the song may seem very familiar, but a director like Robert Siadmak plays it differently than a director like Phil Carlson. Or maybe you'll be excited to see an unexpected performer, someone like Loretta Young or Ann Baxter, suddenly crossing over to the dark side. Now, if you need further convincing, Ramona, join us back here next week. I'll be presenting the definitive film noir. And if you're not hooked after that, well, then there may be no hope for you. But then, no hope is par for the course in Noir Alley. <laughs>